Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at properties of radicals. So in your notebook, please put down the subtitle, Properties of Radicals. First things first, what is a radical? Well, a radical is the actual name for what you might know as the square root symbol. So wherever you see the square root symbol, it's actually a radical. Now let's get some vocabulary out of the way first. So you have the square root symbol, and inside the square root symbol, you have either a number or a variable. Let's just say x. Now the vocabulary I want to get out of the way is the following. There's two words. Well, one is that the square root symbol, that is called a radical. And the second thing is the object inside the radical that has a special name to it and that is called the radicand get used to that word because I'll be using it quite often now when it comes to radicals there are two main properties that I would like to look at the first one is the following property number one the radical of a product. In other words, what happens when we have something like this? Radical of, let's say, x times y. The radical of a product. Well, this property states that if we have the radical of a product, we are actually allowed to pull that product apart, and each object has its own radical. So it could look like this. Radical x multiplied by radical y. Let's do a quick example to see this property in action. So suppose I ask you to do what is the square root of 25 times 9. So let's see how this property works. Well, we know that 25 times 9 is 225. So this is the same as saying square root of 225. And the square root of 225 is equal to 15. Now look at the answer that we get using this property. Well, the radical of 25 times 9 can be rewritten as the square root of 25 times the square root of 9. When you simplify those two objects, it gives us 5 times 3, which again gives us 15. This is the property in action, the radical of a product. Now let's take a look at the second property, which is the radical of a quotient or a fraction. So it could look something like this. The square root of x over y. Now this property states that the numerator and the denominator can be taken apart each one possessing its own radical. So this could be rewritten as the square root of x over the square root of y. Let's take a look at a quick example to see this in action. Suppose I want to do the square root of 81 over 9. Well, if you do it in a straightforward manner, 81 over 9 reduces to 9, and then the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Now let's take a look at the result using the property. The property states that the square root of 81 over 9 can be rewritten as the square root of 81 divided by the square root of 9. When you simplify, that gives us 9 over 3. And the final result, 3. Now there's one huge danger associated with the properties of radicals. So in the danger color, I would like you to put danger. 
And the main danger is the following. The fact that some people believe that the square root of x plus y can be rewritten as the square root of x plus the square root of y. In fact, this is completely false. There's no such property. The same goes with subtraction. The square root of x minus y cannot be rewritten as the square root of x minus the square root of y. And here's the proof of this danger. Suppose I asked you to calculate for me the square root of 25 plus 9. I'm going to show you that this does not equal the square root of 25 plus the square root of 9. Let's take a look. The square root of 25 plus 9 is the same as saying the square root of 34. And the square root of 34 is around 5.83. Now let's take a look at the right side. The square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 9 is 3. And the final result of the right side is 8. As you can see, both sides are not equal to each other. And there's one more aspect of the properties of radicals that I wish to discuss, and it is how, in many cases, the associative property of multiplication applies. If you forgot what the associative property means, you should really look that up. That's all the way from grade 6, grade 7, grade 8, around those grades. Basically, the associative property allows to do the following. Let's take a look at two scenarios. The first scenario is the following. Suppose I have a multiplied by square root of b multiplied by c multiplied by the square root of d. The associative property tells you that as long as it's all multiplication, these objects can be totally rearranged. This could be rewritten as suppose a times c times square root of b times the square root of d. Let's take a look at a quick example of this particular aspect of properties of radicals in action. Suppose I ask you to calculate 2 times the square root of 9 times 3 times the square root of 36. If you were to do this in a straightforward manner, you would get 2 multiplied by the square root of 9 is 3, multiplied by 3, and multiplied by the square root of 36 is 6. Further simplifying, we get 6 multiplied by 18. And our final answer is 108. Now, if we were to redo this example using the associative property of multiplication, our example could possibly be rewritten as the following. 2 times 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 36. When we simplify, we get 2 times 3 times 3 times 6. And again, all that gives us 108. This associative property can also apply to division in the following manner. Suppose we have a multiplied by the square root of b divided by c multiplied by the square root of d. The associative property allows us to possibly rewrite this as a divided by c multiplied by the square root of b divided by the square root of d. 
Let's take a look at a quick example to see this in action. Suppose I ask you to calculate the following. I want you to calculate 6 times the square root of 9 divided by 4 times the square root of 36. If you do this in a straightforward manner, you'll get 6 multiplied by the square root of 9 is 3 divided by 4 multiplied by the square root of 36 is 6. And this, this gives you a final answer of 18 over 24. Now let's see this example again but using the associative property. So using the associative property this could be rewritten as 6 divided by 4 multiplied by the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 36. We get 6 over 4 multiplied by 3 over 6 and again this gives us an answer of 18 over 24. And that's it ladies and gentlemen that's all there is to the properties of radicals.